welcome. You're watching Head to Head. I'm Antonina Antosha with UATV. The government is looking for an opportunity to speed up a high school reform. This is according to the Minister of Education of Ukraine, Hanna Novosad. Changes in high school are planned for 2027, but the Cabinet of Ministers is looking for ways to accelerate this process. To discuss this, we are joined in the studio today by Natalia Shuliha. She's the senior expert on education and science at Reanimation Packager Reforms. Hello, and thank you for joining us. Hello. So I have a quote here by um, uh, the Minister of Education of Ukraine. So she said, what was laid down two years ago, the new Ukrainian school started is of great value to us. The task of our government is even more difficult because we need to continue it at the next two links of the school. Why is reform of the secondary and higher education seems to be more difficult than that of the primary school? During the middle school and high school, actually the young um, personality is supposed to find out what would be the core issues in their lives? What would be their position toward their future profession? What kind of skills and knowledge they need to acquire? Mm -hmm. So it's a difficult task even for their parents, but for the young youngsters, it's even more difficult task. So who can help them with making such a lifelong future decisions? So, ministry as a governmental entity responsible for implementation of education reform need to first think about the standards. They will be applied to the secondary and high school. That's for the first step. And it's a document, it's a major document which should be produced at the level of the ministry and all institutions which work with the ministry for implementation. Secondly, you need to budget this portion of reform. For example, to start reform of <coughs> elementary school, the budget was about 1 billion grivna for one year. And this amount of money allowed us to prepare teachers for the beginning of the reform, to prepare the environment for the students. So it means classes there, tables, the um, interaction, mm -hmm. uh, desk boards and mm -hmm. other stuff, all of that equipment. So education of the teachers, environment, and also work with the entire education professional field and parents to prepare them that their children will start something new. So it was budgeted, so it was successful. For the middle school, higher school, it would be budget with a coefficient of 10 at least, because it's more deep education, more tools, more equipment, more professional educators should be involved. So this is a real challenge for the ministry. Is the reform of the elementary school over yet? Is, has it been fully implemented? Not yet, of course, because it was just the beginning. It was the uh, 2018, it was the first year mm -hmm. when uh, students came to the first uh, grade with this new environment. So uh, elementary school is for four years. For example, I was asking the ministry if they already put enough money to the budget to mm -hmm. continue elementary school reform, and she said they managed to do that. It would be 1.4 billion grivna for year 2019-2020. So it's very encouraging movement in this direction. What else needs to be done to fully implement the reform of the elementary school First of all, it's education of the teachers. Okay. Because teachers need I'm not to... ready yet. <laughs> yes, of course not, because uh, first of all, uh, uh, our audience should, should understand that when we started more than 10 years ago, we didn't have at all any support. Because it was only a question about, give us more money and we will do whatever mm -hmm. needs to be done. And it was wrong, because with old methodology, old equipment, they would not be able to achieve the result quickly. So it should be enough time to prepare teachers. And gradually, we were able to achieve 
at least 10% of this agents of change mm -hmm. at the teacher's level. And now when we have ad camps and other instruments to involve more and more teachers into this educational process, for them first, I look uh, positively and look forward to the successful implementation of the elementary school reform. But the next steps actually, were originally planned for 12 years, mm -hmm. imagine that. So, and now when these elementary school uh, teachers uh, support gave us, also with the salary increase, because it goes in par parallel, you need to make this um, uh, profession at the society accepted, not only at the prof some other profession, no, profession of teachers supposed to move to the top hierarchy for the profession, because that's the people who would be directly um, affecting our future, because they're working with our children. So this is a parallel process. So imagine you need to budget all of that elements of the reform. So um, this idea of acceleration, we were discussing with the previous minister constantly. And now I'm very glad the new minister is going along the way it's not like a person from the street. It's a person who was working in the ministry, familiar with the structure and departments and all of that stuff. It's easier for her to continue the same path. But we seriously discuss what should be done to accelerate the reform because parents and children looking at what's happening in the elementary school they became envy. They want to move toward the changes more quickly. Uh, I couldn't agree more <clears throat> with what you have said uh, just now about the teachers. However, I do have another quote by the Minister of Education of Ukraine. She said, it is quite rare that we ask children for feedback as part of the education process. We leave them no chance to choose the subjects they want to learn or to develop their personal paths. If we don't allow children to do this, we won't have conscious citizens who will continue making conscious choices in life. Now, as far as I know, and I know it from my personal experience in Europe and then in the United States of America, um, pupils and students are allowed to choose uh, the majority of the subjects. At the high school. At yes. the high school. That's right. correct. Are we aiming to do the same in Ukraine? Exactly, okay. exactly. That's the major uh, argument we use to convince the parents who didn't want to add extra year to the school education because they say, oh, we were studying for 10 years in Soviet Union, that was enough. They keep forgetting that we were studying for six days a week. We had only one day free of study at yeah. school and it was more challenging and it was compressed into 10 years because no it was, google right <laughs> exactly it, it was a completely different issue the major argument was for us for extending to another year so the total total education at school would be 12 years because three years at high school for those who choose to go to the further education, to the higher education, to the universities, to the colleges, to the academic path. Mm -hmm. they, why they need deeper, deeper education. It's to let those children to choose what concentration they need to move forward to the higher education. Because when people believe that every child should take five days of math, five days of history, five days of physics, five days of chemistry. This is insane. It's not working this way because some children want to be more concentrated on history. They will not be able to spend more time on physics, chemistry, astronomy. Some children are just prone to be more Exa concentrated exactly. on humanitarian so sciences. They preparing to the higher education, they can take more deeper education in high school. High school. It's, it's um, mm. 10, 11, 12 grade to uh, learn more and really make decision. Am I going to be a historian? Mm -hmm. Am I going to be working in the chemistry lab in the industry or whatever? That's time for them to make this conscious decision, not to be uh, 
you know, like somebody, I don't know what to do with my life, but let me try I'll this, to or let me dad. try that, or maybe <laughs> listen to my parents, what my parents tell yeah. me. And this is a big mistake on, on, on behalf of the parents, because if they try to program the life of their children, they will be guilty later on for lack of success or frustration. Yeah. Another thing that is of great importance, another issue that is of great importance when we talk about the education and the reform in the education sphere of Ukraine, it's the relationships between children and teachers or the top management of schools and even higher educational universities. Because we have inherited from the Soviet era that teachers are something scary. The headmaster of the school is if you see him and he knows your name, you are in trouble 100%. How do we change the perception of the children and parents? Because it's the parents who actually put this perception in their children's minds that teachers and the headmasters and the top management of school is something scary. Those are the people that can put you in trouble. You know, how do we take that away and put in children's minds that those are the people who can introduce our children to the world of education, who can introduce our children to the world of choosing the future profession, the passion of their life. How do we do that? Well, um, we already declared that uh, new Ukrainian school, it's about this uh, triangle of parents, children, and teachers. Absolutely. So it should be uh, the construct which works together from the day one. From the elementary school, and now it's a big issue of preschool education, so kindergartens, what's going there. Also, it's not um, a necessary education according to our constitution, but we know that by age of five, you form the personality of your child. So it's, it, it should be early intervention. So the whole idea behind the new Ukrainian school is to promote this triangle or this uh, consortium, or you can call it whatever, uh, this uh, collaboration, <laughs> collaboration <laughs> or consortium or whatever uh, between teachers, parents, and child, when every part of this triangle is equal rights. So everybody from this um, uh, consortium has the right to say, to uh, act, and to agree. Mm -hmm. And because we put child inside of the whole standard, whole program, it means that adults should cooperate in a positive, only positive, constructive way. Right. It should be no way to, for children to hate the teachers. That's why it would be working through these uh, cabinets when parents can communicate with uh, teachers and can uh, find out what's going on mm -hmm. with their child. Mm -hmm. And also teacher can learn what's going on in the family, what kind of troubles can come from the family and provide environment from, from, for, for the child of safety, of uh, understanding of the Being process. Accepted. Exactly. Yeah. And this idea of uh, in, inclusive education also very important part because children from the beginning will observe that there are some children different with some defects you don't have, but you need to trust and you need to respect those children with other qualities because they normally have more passion, compassion, more tolerance, more... More patience. Uh, exactly. So that's the whole idea. We are turning the whole education system to support individual child and to let this child to develop in friendly, professional, accepting environment and to help child to choose and help what he chose to help to improve, to accelerate in this field. So that's why 
we are creating different type of methodology, uh, school um, specialization at the middle and high school. When child can move mm -hmm. actually from middle to high school to different schools, mm -hmm. they can move between schools during those years. It's enough years, like five years for middle school. It's enough years to find out, but it should be an environment of support and exception. Absolutely accepting uh, otherwise it will not work so as i told before it's it's a huge issue uh, in preparing the teachers and the parents to this new concept and convince them that only in this collaboration we can achieve great success and if we want to accelerate the process of reform everybody should um, contribute mentally contribute Yes, to the reform behaviorally. Because, yes. After all, we're talking about our future generations and the future of our nation and the country exactly. as we are. And exactly. And we have to work together as a, as a nation. Otherwise, this major reform uh, would not happen. And I'm very glad that Prime Minister actually brought to the attention of the nation we have two major priorities, economy and education. And education. Thank you so much for coming. You're welcome. Thank you for inviting me. Always a pleasure. That was Natalia Shilga. She is the senior expert in education and science at Reanimation Package of Reform. Thank you so much for watching Hat to Hat. Stay tuned with UATV for the rest.